Hello and welcome to Bit Heroes Radio. I'm World Leader, and I'm thrilled to be hosting this podcast with Bitverse Andy. Bitverse Andy, why don't you say hello? Hey, what's up, world? And hello to our listeners. I want to kick off this podcast by going over the agenda for today's episode. First things first, as always, we'll go over the most recent Bitverse news. Then we have an exciting new interview with one of the top Bit Heroes players, who some of you might know. Squawk! It is the esteemed Roasty Chicken, who's approaching level 1000. I believe they're at 972 as of yesterday or the day before when I checked. And I don't want to spoil too much, but we have some exciting conversations, including, you know, how Roasty gets their XP. So stick around and listen for that. Following that, we will have our most fabulous segment, <laughs> uh, the the Fashion Heroes segment. And then, as always, we'll wrap up with some viewer questions. So, just jumping straight into the news here. As we all know, we are right in the middle of Mobileversary. It started back about a week ago on May 4th, and it will be going for one more week until May 18th. And today they've done something pretty rare for holiday events. And just for this second week of the event, starting today on the 11th at this time of recording, they have boosted the event currency, the Sardinex currency, known this time as Standman W606s. You know, it's kind of a goofy name, but they have doubled the drop rate for them. So if you were running behind, you know, you might feel like you're not on pace to complete the Sardinex shop this event, or maybe you're just out of town like myself. This second week of the event is going to be a great opportunity to max out the Sardinex shop for Mobileversary. Last notable thing about the Mobileversary is of course the new cosmetics. And I only want to give a shout out to the free cosmetic that you can get from just basically a drop in dungeons or raids or wherever. Uh, you have a chance to get the Get Smart Mount Cosmetics to drop. You know, just looking at it, I think it's a little funny. It looks just like a face down like iPhone with a pop socket on top of it, but hey, it's a sick new ride for you. Yeah, I honestly really do like that free mount. It's pretty clean. I, I think it's um, very minimal, and that's kind of what I look for in some mounts for certain looks, so I'm glad they didn't add something over the top like they have in some previous events. So I really do dig the aesthetics for that mount as well. For other news, we also do have the Bit Heroes Arena Global Launch. Pretty much uh, international players should have significantly less lag and less crashes now. So it should be a much smoother experience for everybody. And honestly, it seems like it's going to be a good time. So maybe I'll see you all out there in the battlefield. Now, let's go ahead and move on to interviewing the one, the only, the Roasty Chicken himself. So, Roasty, if you're okay with it, uh, do you mind if we ask you a few questions? Of course, I'm at your disposal. Amazing. So right off the bat, and for our audience's sake, could you just please tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so my in-game name is Roasty Chicken. I've been playing this game, this uh, bit first game, for about five years now. I'm level 972 now. I'm closing in on level 1000 to get my custom uh, chicken cosmetic. So I'm looking forward to that. And of course, I'm Basically, like World Eater, just better in every in every way. <laughs> so you've been playing for around five years, you said. What do you enjoy most about playing Bit Heroes, and what keeps you motivated to continue playing? In terms of motivation, mainly just the community and like the friends I've made. Uh, I always love helping people out and uh, just basically just chatting with friends and yeah, I just enjoy the community. Honestly, same. The community in this game is insanely awesome. Everyone out there is pretty cool, from the newbies to all the vets. Love most of them, if not all of them. Yeah, totally. Um, and big extra shout out to the Bit Heroes radio community. Oh yeah, <laughs> had to plug us there. Yeah, um, of course, of course. <laughs> so real quick, I think I might know the answer. Um, but what is your preferred role in Bit Heroes, like DPS, tank, healer, or or and also why? So I definitely just enjoy being the DPS. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, I always enjoy being the damage dealer. Um, and I've wanted to be DPS for the entirety of my time playing this game. Uh, however, the meta has shifted towards um, 
builds like three X Stort and Witchum and full ancient builds, right? So at the moment, DPS aren't in a great spot, I would say. Um, but here's to hoping for tier 21. DPS are like kind of overshadowed by tanks right now, but I feel like it is a lot more fun to play that role. So I'm still kind of envious that you get to have all these really cool builds that you can do, and I'm just stuck with one or two sets because, I mean, if you want to be tanky and, you know, useful to your team, you got to play what's meta, and that's usually the same two sets, which is right now, in my opinion, probably going to be Witchum and... <laughs> Probably a tie between Perk and Ciodon, since I'm not really seeing anything else. Yeah, no, I definitely agree that uh, DPS have a lot more variety of builds to choose from. And it's a lot cheaper to run as well, especially for free-to-play players. Um, a cheap tank build would be a lot less effective than someone who's paying uh you know, you have to get all the runes, the enchants, the accessory, yeah. uh, ancients to have a good tank build. Whereas DPS, you can fly by perfectly fine with just the set. Um, and you can mix and match your runes more. You have a lot more leeway. Um, so overall, it's just a cheaper way to play the game. I completely agree. I feel like every time um, I try a new playthrough, because I've done different playthroughs on multiple accounts, as you guys already know, um, I've tried DPS uh, start-offs, tank start-offs, and, uh, of course, bait and support. Uh, support's a little harder because it's kind of like healer. And I would have to say the easiest would have to definitely be DPS, only because when I am running through it, it's kind of like how you said, for uh, a tankier role, you really do have to have the exact runes you need so like you're going for evade you have to have evade so on so forth you know but dps you can literally just have a bunch of different things that pertain to dps like empower dual strike speed damage just random things thrown in there and you'll still be better off than a tank going with random things thrown in their arsenal so honestly yeah like dps definitely i can see why you're going for it yeah that's actually super interesting and, and i totally agree because when you're tanking you know you want to have one thing at you know 75 percent but when you DPS, you do want that spread for, for what's called like multi procs and stuff. So, totally agree. Um, and especially like uh, Clover plays into that as well with uh, spreading out mm -hmm. your um, modifiers, right? Um, I think Clover is very beneficial for DPS players, I think, more so than defensive players. Yeah, Clover. Honestly, ever ever since Clover came out, it just feels it feels really nice. But I know you were talking about going for level one thousand earlier, and I saw that you're like nine seventies. I think. What are some of the best methods for grinding XP and gaining hundreds of levels quickly? Okay, so the best method and the cheapest method are different things. Um, the the cheapest way to get EXP is running raids on Bitcore. However, that's going to take you like a good couple years longer <laughs> to do running straight than if you were to run a uh, world boss. Um, the system I have at the moment uh, for getting resources to run world boss is to gather. I, I run my NFTs, my regen on my NFTs. I gather all my honor. I spend all my honor into badges. Uh, and then I turn those badges into more honor to buy zeals onto my main account. So what I'm doing is I'm running a ice score in invasion um, on my main, and then I transfer all that honor I get from running that invasion into zeals to run an ultra gore in world boss. Oh, okay. I see. I see your method. So you're saying that your NFTs since uh, zeals aren't shared between other uh, other characters, you're saying that you turn them into badges, and that's when you use your exagores and ice scores in Invasion, and then you use that experience to craft your zeals to use your Ultra Gore and World Boss. Because I yes, heard that World so, Boss is the best way, right? If I'm not mistaken? Yes, yeah, so currently, the fastest way to gain EXP is to run World Boss. Um, if you're looking at around on an Ultra Gore, 15 to 18,000 EXP per run. Um, and you get five zeals per zeal pouch, which is around 100 
thousand exp per zeal bag on ultra which is insane value and i'm pretty sure like when i la when i was running my last ultra i was running it on world boss and um i noticed as i was running world boss with my ultra gore i was just getting so much more honor back it was almost it almost felt infinite. It felt like I was just refueling myself every time I was trying to make a push. So I definitely agree and see why World Boss is really good because you can just keep pumping the honor you get from those World Boss runs into more zeals to get even more runs and get even more levels with your Ultra Gore. The best thing about it, I believe, is... I don't know if it was you or Chuck that told me this, but I believe someone said that any level any tier world boss will give the same amount of experience on that ultra gore correct uh and any world boss gives the exact same exp if you want a tier 11 tier 20 it's the exact same exp it's the same wow. thing with raids same thing with dungeons same thing with tg if you if you're at that max exp that's all you're gonna get right mm -hmm. nice wow that's crazy Say, just out of curiosity, for a 12-hour Ultra Gore, how many zeals can you run through? So, depends how focused I am. I am. If I'm fully focused for the full 12 hours, I can do well over 6,000 runs in one <sighs> Ultra Gore. Um, I average around 5,000 runs per Ultra at the moment. Um, yeah, so not, so not bad, <laughs> uh, definitely. <laughs> it's it's a lot, lot of, of clicking and, and pressing <laughs> the space bar. Yeah, gosh, that's crazy. <laughs> Props to you for those those sweaty hardcore gamer sessions. That sounds insane. <laughs> the, the, the worst the worst part is cleaning up the inventory afterwards because uh, you'll 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 gain about fifty mythics, and then of course you have to upgrade them all once yep. before you destroy <laughs> them. That's awesome, honestly. Oh, I can't wait for my ultra push. I'm actually saving up for one myself. I also plan to go to level 1K, just not right now. So you might see me up there sooner or later. But I did want to ask you a few things real quick. I know we're talking about some high-level stuff here, but do you have any tips or strategies for maybe like newer players or maybe like I'd say mid-level players, those people that are around tier 12-ish to maybe I'd say tier 15 is about mid-game? <laughs> Um, all I can say is that the most important aspect of this game is familiars, and it will always be familiars. If you are struggling on a flag, work on your familiars. Get get better augments. You know, it's a constant grind. Familiars you don't have to up tier. Um, they go with your character. If and they will carry you through flags no matter what. We have people. We have quit the game for four tiers, come back and sweep through all the flags just because their familiars are mythic, right? They have the augments, they have the familiars ready. Um, so it doesn't really matter with TS, it doesn't really matter with your build too much. If you have good familiars, you'll get through this game so much faster. Um, and I feel like a lot of people sleep on them a lot, you know? People just I settle with like, with like an epic, yeah, I agree. I, I honestly think that familiars make or break any player. Like, you can be kitted out with the best equipment and have, like, really dookie familiars, and you won't be able to clear any of those dungeons for those really good ancients if you have really dookie familiars. That's all I got to say about that. Um, speaking of dungeons, I know you did just clear the most recent D4, and I know you were the first one to beat it, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Correct, Yes. Congratulations. Was, uh, yeah, big congrats on that. That's that's awesome. Yeah, I ran that dungeon three hours straight as soon as it came out. Yep. <laughs> it it it's a long one. It's uh I mean runs in that dungeon are long. I mean the winning attempt was about twenty minutes, thirty minutes long. Um so I think I did at most around like twenty attempts before I beat it. Not bad, not bad. Dang. <laughs> Honestly, I I don't think I'd ever get get that close to being beating a, a D four. That's that's really impressive, really fast. Again, huge congrats. Um, 
I guess while we're on the topic of D4s, do you have any tips for maybe some previous D4s like Clover Dungeon or maybe um, any of the other ones? Um, so as a player who's been current tier since tier 7, um, I only really know strategies for current tier. Um, all I can really recommend is that if a tier is four tiers behind, you can pretty much just brute force your way through it with tier 20 TS. Um, that being said, uh, deflect is always a good modifier to depend on for D4s as well as evade. Um, again, defensive builds are a lot easier um, when you're a couple of tiers ahead. In terms of trying to beat it with DPS, yeah, speed, go full speed and just abuse the turn rate of the system, right? You know, I mean, definitely adjusting your build to what you have is the most important part of the game. Uh, you can't just follow a guide blindly and expect that you'll beat it. Um, you have to understand how to, how the build functions, how to use the skills in the right scenario um, and adjust to what you have. Um, of course, if you don't, if you're being out healed, if you can't do enough damage to kill them, you have to increase your power, or in add a, another DPS familiar, or uh, maybe reforge something into whatever modifier you want. I mean, I know Ferium Helmet; they have many modifiers. Um, Combust is very popular. Uh, Shock is also powerful because it hits the front. Yes. So, um, and of course, pets, right? So the two pets I'm seeing that are working really well in the current D4 are Zordig and Kolg. And to understand why Zordig and Kolg are so good is important as well. Um, Kolg being targeting front. So your RNG there would be to wait for your bosses to be in the front of the trash pack. And Zordig, you have to time your skills properly so that you're the boss needs to die first, right? So you have to time your skills properly for it to die first. If it doesn't die first, then you're pretty screwed and the run's kind of over. Because <laughs> uh, then you'll just kill the trash, the trash will buff the boss, and then the boss will be out healing you, out damaging you, and you just won't have a good time. If you don't mind, uh, what build were you using, if you don't mind sharing that with us? Yeah, no, so I, I kind of knew immediately as soon as the default came out that uh, this is going to be a DPS, uh, DPS slash support. Um, I originally started using Aeneas. Uh, I had a little fun Aeneas build with Savage and uh, Spear Viscarium, but uh, with like 600,000 turn rate, uh, which is a bit excessive. And rightfully so, the build did not do a lot of damage, so I immediately switched to a full ancient DPS build with uh, Shield of Ascarium, uh, Thornstein Shield uh, for Revitalize, uh, Combust Virium Helmet for damage, as well as procs for pets and Revitalize. Um, uh, I started off using Soul of Ascarium, uh, which was set to Combust for when I, for when I redirect. Um, but I later changed that to Jacket, simply just to remove, to add another Tethius to the mix and to increase my speed and turn rate. Um, so Jacket was used for that. Clover, of course, is an obvious choice to increase as much dual strike and, and power that I can because of the fact that every time you kill a fam, they'll gain accuracy. So I want, I want to have as much dual strike and empower to make it as consistent as possible. And then finally was Evolvium. I mainly used it for a second revitalized skill to um, help with healing because those some of those bosses hit really hard. I know the, uh, I think his name is Espinar. Um, mm -hmm. He probably hits the hardest out of the bosses. Um, so I felt like the double revitalized really helped me there. Um, cause I, I, I had on my winning attempt, I had zero deaths on all three bosses. Oh, wow. Um, Legend. I felt that was literally just because I had double revitalized, right? 
Um, that honestly sounds crazy. Like that sounds yeah. That sounds I really mean, smart. Honestly, like it, the it, double it, revival. It's a, it's really a fun good. build. I mean, the the build fits itself into a couple of niches. It fits into a bait build because of jacket. It's a uh, your DPS build. It's the only DPS you I had on the team. It was for Tethius and myself. Uh, so I was a DPS. I was support. I was shielding. I was bait. Uh, pretty much every role except tanking. Yeah, you're doing everything. That sounds crazy. Honestly, that's that's really insane, Rossi. Like huge GZ again. Huge congrats. Yeah, ditto. Um, just super curious, and it might be that tier twenty D four, but what has been what you would call your most challenging experience in the game? I feel like the past D4 uh, Weety dungeon was, um, I think, a lot harder than this one, uh, simply because they just restricted so much in that dungeon. They literally took everything that they've thought of up to that dungeon, put it all into one dungeon, and then added the fact that you start the turn with zero SP. Um, I feel like that D4 made us think uh hard enough for a build that we based that i used the same build in this d4 that i did in the last d4 and i spent six hours trying to think of how to make that build work in the weedy dungeon so i feel like weedy definitely made me think more um i already had the build ready for when the new d4 um i can't remember the, the d4's name sacramentum i think it's called uh, definitely Weety Dungeon is uh, the most challenging one I've, uh, I've faced so far. Yeah, honestly, that's, that's a really hard dungeon. I, I think I beat it the last week before the current tier came out. Um, I was going at it pretty hard, and I know a lot of people were just going at it, going at it, going at it. And I was surprised that it was beaten the first day, I believe. And that person that beat it the first day, I believe it was a... Adone or odd one? I don't. I don't know how to say the name. Sorry. Adone. Adone. Yeah. A D D O N. -E. Yeah. I, I. I still don't know how that build beat it because I think they were the only person that used that build that beat it with that build. And I know a lot of people tried replicating his build, and they couldn't pass it. They tried replicating the familiars and everything, and I think he just got extremely lucky. <laughs> but he. Wow. He beat it really quick, and then it took a while for others to beat it after that, I believe. Yeah, I think, so it took me six hours to beat it. Um, I think that he day? beat it in the first hour. Yeah. You beat it that day, too? What? Yeah. <laughs> I'm cutting that out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. So, Rosa, you've clearly, well, you even mentioned that you've been playing for five plus years now. How do you think the game has sort of evolved over time? Like, what are some of the most significant changes that have been made? By far, the most significant change has been the introduction of Clover as an ancient. I feel like it's the most broken item in the game. Um, my one worry about the item is that it discourages um, sets to be used, especially if you own Clover. Uh, if a new set comes out and you have Clover and you can't use Clover with the set, that set's just going to get ignored. Um, Agreed. So I feel like there needs to be some rebalancing. Um, I, I don't know how you would rebalance Clover. Uh, my stance with Clover has always been nerf it or embrace it. Don't ignore it. Um, so I feel like sets coming forward need to plan around clover as an item if clover is to stay in this game yeah clover is kind of nutty um when i first saw it i was like holy crap like basically re-rolling a bad roll like that's nuts so i mean it, it basically you know teeters those odds so much in your favor so i, I definitely see how that's game changing someday i'll get it <laughs> one day andy i think bit versus I, I, I randy is gonna get it first oh <laughs> he just might dude honestly a lot of this information is really really useful to all these players out here that are listening again thank you so much for listening guys we appreciate and love you all 
Uh, what advice would you give someone who wants to become a top player like you, Rusty? Have a lot of patience. <laughs> um, like a, a lot of these high-end free-to-play players have been playing since day release. I think the highest level free-to-play player is around level 700. Um, so to get where I am at, you do have to spend. Um, a recommendation if you are to spend, the best value is to get an NFT account. In terms of other, other values for the um, for spending your money, um, cred sales, uh, buying uh, XXL packs that give like 12 of each resource, um, waiting for events like Christmas and Mobileversary, which we, we should be currently are having. Um, you know, if you want to get to where I am, you definitely have to spend in the game, sadly. And just for y'all uh, wondering what cred sales are, there are there's this currency that is on the Congregate website, and it's using this currency called creds to purchase things in game because you can play the game on their website. And instead of using real money, they show you creds. So you have to pretty much buy creds to buy in the game online. And for cred sales, they have these sales where you can go and buy a gift card from, I believe, CVS or Dollar General. I'm not pretty sure it's one of those two or if not both and it doubles or triples the amount of creds you get something like that and um there's certain times where that happens throughout the year it's not an every month thing it's not an every week thing you just have to pay attention and trust me guys you can spend very little and get a lot out of it if you wait for these times but that is what the cred sale is if you guys were wondering so, Rosie, I am curious, what are some of your future goals and aspirations for Bit Heroes? At the moment, my only goal at the moment is to get to level 1000. Um, that's just been my focus right now. Um, after I've reached that, I'm probably just going to coast with uh, playing my NFT accounts, having fun, taking those up in the tiers and stuff. Uh, other than that, no. Uh, I'm a smooth sail. Um, trying to focus more on uh, in real life and stuff. Uh, got a new job, which is awesome. So yeah, I'm just enjoying life. Nice. Well, hey, congrats, congrats on the congrats new, job, on the new dude. job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, that was Roasty Chicken. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. You were great as always, and we'll see you next time. Take care, Roasty. Thank you so much. Take Thank care. Thank you bro. so much for having me. Clock. Anytime. Clock. <laughs> and now we're going to be moving on to one of my favorite segments of the show, Fashion Heroes. Let me go ahead and announce the previous winner from the last episode. Can we get a drum roll, please? Pocket Apple. Pocket Apple, you knocked it out of the park. We honestly thought that your look was really, really nice and very, very clean. Um, do you have anything to say about the previous winner, Andy? I will just say Pocket Apple's look has shocked the audience. <laughs> I see what you did there. Speaking of shocking, World, I'm curious, isn't there some sort of shock mechanic in Bit Heroes? Actually, yes, Andy, there is. Shock actually applies a stack on the target with each hit. Upon receiving the third stack, they trigger an EMP, giving the same damage to all enemies equal to the amount of damage stacked. Wow, that uh, truly sounds electrifying. Shocking, indeed. <laughs> uh. But don't, <laughs> don't feel bad, Aaron. We honestly could not decide which one of the alls was better. It was just a community vote. We honestly thought both of y'all looked extremely sick all right and for this episode's contestants we have quite possibly the highest anticipated 1v1 in fashion heroes of all time the famous and esteemed bitverse andy versus bitverse randy folks oh my goodness if we take a look at andy here you know i might be a little biased but goodness he he looks like he looks righteous. You know, he's rocking almost what looks like a paladin set. You know, he's got that light pet. You know, he's waving that little uh, that little that little wand with a wing. <laughs> but he looks really dope. And then we do also have Bitfers Randy here. Um, you know, you could say 
he's got a more of a, a dark side vibe to him. You know, he's got his, you can't really see his face. It's like a shadow. He's got that purple banner. He's got that sweet looking scythe. So this is truly a battle of good versus evil here. Andy versus Randy. I don't know. I think my vote's on Randy. He's looking uh, pretty <laughs> scary. No. <laughs> I'm going to have to make a call out for all the uh, Andy stands to vote for Andy in the comments this time around. So please, everybody, make sure you do vote in the comments below, uh, whether it's Andy or Randy for this episode. And if you want to be chosen for a future episode, please leave your hero name and hero tag in your comment as well. And you might just be featured in a future episode. So moving on to our viewer questions. Our first question of this episode comes to us from Dirty Dr. Sprite, who asks, how do you get an NFT hero? This is a question we get quite often, and it's a little bit complex. I won't lie to you. It, inv it involves, you know, making a cryptocurrency wallet and loading it up with cryptocurrency, heading to the bitverse.io, their website, and, you know, connecting your wallet to the Mutable X, inputting Ethereum. It's a long process. And then ultimately, you will purchase it from either the Bitverse's website or Immutable X's marketplace. The only other way I've seen people get it is through a few giveaways when they were first coming out, but I haven't seen any recently from the Bitverse, but worth mentioning that for sure. I would recommend you check out the Bitverse's official video on it. It's over on their YouTube, and we'll make sure to leave a link to that in the description. For sure. It's definitely a daunting task, but once you get it all set up, if you plan to buy more than one NFT, it's a lot more simple after doing your first one. So just know that for sure. It's not going to be that difficult every time if you do plan on buying multiple NFT accounts. Now, we're going to go ahead and move on to the second question, which is from Rhino Puddles 44 Best ancient to farm question mark? Well, I'm pretty sure just about everyone in the audience here is going to agree with me. And maybe there aren't going to be some people agreeing with me. If you don't agree with me, leave it in the comments below. But I'm going to have to say Clover. Clover is just insanely overpowered for both, for pretty much any role, actually. For, um, uh, so for pretty much for tanks, for DPS, for healers, support, baits, everything. Clover is just where it's at. There's very few scenarios where I would take Clover off and put something else. And it's so few that I can't even list one right now. So if I can just recommend anyone go for any Ancient, it would have to be Clover for sure. Which you're able to get once you defeat the Tier 17 D4. And yeah, pretty much get all the stuff you need to craft it. But yeah, Clover is definitely the way to go. Yeah, Clover is number one on my shopping list to get. So hoping that it won't be too painful of a grind when I finally get there. <laughs> Good luck on that farm, Andy. Thanks for tuning in to Bit Heroes Radio. We hope you enjoyed listening to our discussion today about all things Bit Heroes. As always, we want to give a big shout out to our community of fans who make this podcast possible. Yeah, totally. And if you have any feedback or suggestions or perhaps viewer questions for future episodes, we'd love to hear from you in the comments below. You can also reach out to us on our Bit Heroes Radio Discord, which you will find a link to in the description. Before we sign off, we want to remind you to subscribe to both our channels on YouTube so you never miss an episode. Please visit both my channel, World Eater, and Bitverse Andy's channel, which you can find links to in the description below. And if you enjoyed the show, please consider leaving a like and comment as it helps other Bit Heroes discover our podcast. Thank you again for listening. Make sure to vote Bitverse Andy for Fashion Heroes, and we'll catch you next time on Bit Heroes Radio. Roasty, is there anything you want to finish off this episode with? Uh, yeah. My name is Roasty Chicken, and I have a massive... <laughs>